Hey everybody, this is my brackish tank and that fish you just saw swim past was my figure 8 puffer butter bean. And tonight we're going to shoot a video of him feeding. I've got a couple of big fat snails in my hand and we're going to throw them in the tank here in a moment. And he's still a little camera shy even after all these years of having him. So he might be a little distracted but he should pretty much go right for the snails once they go in there. So give me half a moment to get them dropped in here. See, he sees the lid opening. Sees my hand. Now let's see if we can get close enough without scaring him too much. Still need to get in there and get the tank cleaned up. You can see the stuff on the glass and of course he's going to be sitting right behind it so we kind of get obscured view of what he's doing. When they finally pick their spot they go for it. They are fast fish when they want to have a little burst of speed. I can't imagine that they could do any kind of sustained speed. <laughs> They're certainly not tuna. Um, but boy, when they dart in and dash in to grab a chunk of flesh, they, they do it fast. They do it really fast. And they're meticulous eaters. They're sloppy, messy eaters, but they're really meticulous. You can see how he watches, he looks around, he inspects every little nook and cranny. He's looking for the exact right spot. And of course, he's also trying to keep one eyeball on me. Sorry, I'm shaking the camera around so much here. Uh, it's probably going to look all fishy and wobbly once the uh, stabilizing uh, gets done with it. At any rate, I really wish I'd known that there was so much stuff on the glass right there. I would have dropped the snails in a little further down the other end of the tank over here where we could actually get a little better look at him. But as I was saying, they're really meticulous. They really uh, look at their prey very close up until they've spotted their spot and then they go in and take the meat out. Now the figure eights actually have enough strength in their tooth plates that they can crush that shell up fairly easily. You can actually see over here there's some broken pieces of a, an old one. And they really need to do that. Their teeth are similar to that of rodents in that they grow all the time and if they don't get worn down you will run into issues where they won't be able to feed anymore. Now the figure eights don't have really hard teeth plates so they don't need really really tough stuff to chew on like clams and things like that that you'll see some of the larger puffers uh, eat and, and some of the larger puffers they'll go through a clam shell like it's an oyster cracker it's amazing watching them just crush through those shells like they're nothing uh, powerful powerful jaws and their their teeth plates must be hard hard as, as diamonds I don't know I mean I just I can't imagine crushing through an oyster shell with my teeth um, but the puffers do it like it's candy Figure eights don't have that kind of bite power though, but for these little ram's horn snails, he goes through them quite easily. His um, staple food is freeze-dried krill. I put freeze-dried krill in the tank for him every day, and that is generally enough if he's got a regular diet of the freeze-dried krill. Even the softer shell of the krill is enough to keep his teeth plates in check and I don't really have to worry too much about it. Uh, once or twice a week I'll give him blood worms and then again every now and again maybe once a week or twice a week I'll actually give him a couple of nice big snails. Uh, I forgot to feed him yesterday. I forgot to feed everybody yesterday. It was just a busy day and by the time I got down here uh, it was a little late in the evening so I just figured everybody could skip a day. It's not really that big a deal for fish to go one day without eating, especially Butterbean here, who is normally quite plump. So he'll have all the rest of the night to work on these. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get all the other fish in the room fed. My knees are starting to hurt from squatting down in front of this tank like this, and I think we've pretty much got the idea of what he's going to be doing the rest of the evening. So as soon as I get out of here and leave him alone and leave him to it, he'll get back to it, and he'll pig out and make a big fat round fish of himself once again but he really just doesn't he's just a nervous puffer I don't know why but he really doesn't like me being here in front of him with the camera um, 
which you know would be understandable if it wasn't for the fact that I've been doing this for years and he still just I don't know he just doesn't ever gets used to it I guess so at any rate I'm gonna go ahead call that a video I'm gonna ask you to please subscribe that way you don't miss anything else I've got coming up don't forget this one is my puffer tank sorry this is my brackish tank my puffer tank is the one upstairs in my office that's my pea puffer tank uh, and this one is my brackish tank with my figure eight puffer. So thanks again for watching. See him take one last chomp. All right, everybody. I'll see you on the next one.